All right, cold day. Starting to clear up a little bit. I gotta get some lunch and I'm gonna go down and hit some thrift stores. That's the car wash from Breaking Bad, the TV series Breaking Bad. Okay, we're at the indoor flea market over in Lomas and San Mateo. I'm gonna go in there and I have reports from my wife and grandson that there might be a couple typewriters in here worth looking at. So I'm gonna try to bring this camcorder in and see if we can't find them. Well, a number of typewriters were there, that's for sure. But I, I did look at the little Smith Corona Zephyr, uh, but it was kind of in bad shape. There was a Remington letter writer big medium-sized machine but it's very much similar to my quiet rider and not as good a shape so I passed but it was fun now I'm gonna go across the street there's another thrift store and I know there's two typewriters there I saw the other day I didn't need a Cyrillic or a Hebrew typewriter but it was cool finding an Optima typewriter they're not very common in these parts but it was Hebrew and the Cyrillic doesn't really do me any good unless we start speaking Russian here in the United States and I don't see that happening. Maybe? Maybe? So this little thrift store outing today was interesting because it kind of represents uh, a, the common experience I have oftentimes in thrift store shopping, especially for typewriters, is you might see typewriters, but it's not necessary that you'll find something worth buying. There's always a lot of machines out there that are in questionable states of repair. I know there's another thrift store we could go to, and probably won't, but there's been like a toy Tom Thumb typewriter there for years, and there's been like junky old Smith Corona, plasticky looking, one of the later portables. Uh, that's not really in good shape and those have been there for over a year maybe two years and I think the little Tom Thumb typewriter has been there for five years and this was the same antique store so you keep seeing the same things over and over but they're not worth buying and the lesson here is that you have to really be patient and you can't just snatch up the first thing you see you really have to think about is there something broken on this machine that I can fix? Uh, do I have parts? Do I have a parts machine to fix it with if it's broken? Otherwise, if you, if you don't, don't buy it. Got to be choosy. Got to be selective. Okay, we got some pan-fried, butter-fried hash browns, red and green chili sauce, garnish, huevos, three eggs over easy on blue corn tortillas. Look at that. Um, um, um. It's gonna be lovely. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, the possibilities for buying typewriters that don't really pan out. So you gotta be selective, as I said. And then afterwards, of course, coming over to this Duke City Kitchen. This is just a recently opened little cafe. It was awesome. The chili sauce on this, uh, the huevos rancheros that I had, it was, I ordered it red and green, both, which we call Christmas here in New Mexico, but it was really tasty chili. Kind of flavorful, garlicky, and the red sauce was really good, and the eggs were great, so. And it was served on a blue corn tortilla. I don't know if you guys ever watched the TV series Breaking Bad. It's been off the air for over five years now, but there was a scene in Breaking Bad in one of the early seasons involving this little mechanics garage, and there was a car that exploded. I don't know if you remember that scene, but anyway, it happened right here. This is where they filmed it. Of course, it didn't destroy the building because they have these filmmaking ways of making explosions that don't actually hurt anything, but this currently is Danny's Auto Service. This is the little location where they did that car explosion at. Well, now all of a sudden my jacket's too hot. Now I have to finish my video about doing center justification typing. 
and get it uploaded and okay so after my morning thrift store antique store shopping didn't find any typewriters worth buying went to lunch my wife called said did you find the typewriter that i hid she said i go what are you talking about she goes i hid the a typewriter in olympia in the antique store underneath a table kind of thing so it's an olympia sm4 maybe i'll have to look but anyway we also got this a Chinese style abacus built in Japan, the Japanese abacus beads. Pretty cool. And a table. Cool. Let's go home and I'll take a look at that typewriter closer. Well, we got ourselves an Olympia typewriter that my wife had spotted a couple days ago and hid at the antique store so nobody else would. Actually, she found it on Sunday and they were closed on Monday. And uh, so, it looks to me, checking it out, it looks like everything is working. Of course, it's going to need a new ribbon and a lot of cleaning and everything, but it's one of the SM series. I don't know exactly what one. One of you guys can tell me. But it has tabs, and it looks like they are preset back here with slugs. And it has, uh, pretty cool. The only thing I noticed really is the ratcheting on the line advance feels not quite as positive. It's kind of mushy. Yeah, so it's pretty dirty looking. Very dirty looking down in here. Needs a lot of cleaning. And uh, so that's probably part of the sluggishness of it. Yes, it actually has a pretty good imprint. As I said earlier, it was really dirty and grungy. Um, there's still some eraser crumbs, a whole lot of eraser crumbs in it. But uh, So I had to clean this segment out quite a bit. Used not only alcohol, but I had to use a little bit of naphtha. Got that going. Now, one of the things I noticed on this machine was that little slot in there is a little... A little more precisely made than some other typewriters. It's really tight clearance. And what I found on some of these type slugs is not the slug itself, but the right below at the side of the top part of the type bar, there was a buildup of residue like old grease or crud on either side of that right there. That would cause it to be tight going into that slot there. And a number of these tie bars were hanging up because of that. And just by cleaning all of the sides of these tie bars right here, it fixed that. The only one that I had to deal with was, I, I believe, the uh, quarter and half fraction. This one, it was actually rubbing the right side of the type slug. It was rubbing against the right side of that guide right there. And so I had to reshape this arm just very slightly to get it to go in the center of the slot there. But that was really the only thing. Most of it was all cleaning everything. Of course I put a new used ribbon or a recently used ribbon, not brand new, but it works pretty good. It has a nice feel, a nice touch to it as you would expect, but it still has a problem and that is moving the carriage to the right, which is the return position. It was really tight. Almost felt like something is scraping and I knew of course about the problem with the rubber bushings and so I went ahead and installed new rubber o-rings or bushings in here and that helped quite a bit but there's still some something going on in the escapement down in here where Occasionally, it doesn't like to return, and it, it, it feels like the escaping gear is really rough to turn. And uh, So what I did is I sprayed some PB Blaster. Yeah, you can't smell it because we don't have smell-o-vision yet, but man, it is stinky out here in the garage. I'm going to let this thing sit overnight, but it's already much smoother but just by spraying a bunch of PB Blaster into there, and I'm hoping that's going to clean out the remainder of the uh, escapement mechanism and make it 
smooth operating. But other than that, it's a wonderful typewriter. It does have the issue with, you know, these little card guides, right? They hinge. This one here on the right is broken, so you can kind of pull it off like that. I think what I'm going to do is just glue it in place. Other than that, it's a beautiful little typewriter. And really happy with it. The platen is a little hard, but not that bad. Okay, it's really late at night, and uh, so the Olympia typewriter is sitting out in the garage. I sprayed a little bit more PB Blaster on the escapement mechanism, and hopefully that'll just sit there overnight and maybe free up a little bit. It's, you know, 48 degrees out there in the garage Fahrenheit, so it's a little cool for solvents to work at their best, but hopefully it'll come back to life. But what I wanted to show you is another item I got at the thrift store or antique store, and that's this abacus. And uh, so, you know, it's a 5-2 abacus, so this is the Chinese uh, configuration of an abacus. But it's Japanese construction, so it has the Japanese biconic beads. And it has these little metal bushings that hold together the frame of it, right? And it has the uh, joinery, right? The tongue and groove or whatever you call it, finger joints. And the laminated dividing bar across the middle. So construction-wise, it's, it's quite a bit better than the typical Chinese-made tourist abacus is what I call them. It has the round beads, the really poorly crafted frame with the cheap little metal corner brackets and stuff. These, this is really well made. And it does bring to mind... Uh, a question, because in Japan, the Soroban, the Japanese Soroban, evolved from the 2.5 to the 1.5 to around prior to World War II and right after World War II, it evolved to the 1.4 variation, the most modern type. So why would you have a 2.5 Japanese style abacus if Japan hasn't really used these in hundreds of years? Well, the answer must be that there are other cultures in Asia that still use the 2.5 abacus, but somehow the quality of construction of the Japanese style is preferred. And so there are, the thing to keep in mind, there's, there's multiple cultures using the bead frame abacus, not just Japan, even though Japan is the most noteworthy because of the advances they've made in refining the abacus. But other cultures are still using the 2.5 configuration, and so uh, I'll be doing some future videos about that, etc. Anyways, it's kind of cool to see this old abacus. Another abacus to my collection. I wasn't the only one that got some things from the antique store. My wife, we found a little colorful table for our patio room, so she was satisfied too. And also, she noticed she was enabling my typewriter collecting hobby. <laughs> Because she's the one that, I guess it was my grandson actually, that found the Olympia typewriter. But she enabled it. She was all for it. And she was actually wondering, why am I doing this? Why am I helping you get more typewriters? And I was wondering the same thing. So anyways, she doesn't even understand why. But somehow, they've gotten under her skin and now she likes them, maybe. Well, I'll do another video when I get the Olympia fully serviced and running properly. And of course, look forward for more Abacus videos also. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and this is not a vlog. Have a good day.